Hello and welcome. My name is Prasenjit and today I bring to you another case study for Google Cloud uh, Architect Certification Examination and that is uh, Terram Earth. Now in Google Cloud Certification Examination uh, you will have uh, at least two case studies uh, per exam out of the four that are listed in the official uh, documentation. So Terra Mirth is one of uh, these case studies and you will have at least 10 questions from these case studies uh, on the examination. So for those who are preparing for this uh, Google Cloud Architect Certification exam, uh, I want you to go through this case study and understand its nuances. Well, what is Terra Mirth case study all about? Uh, well, the purpose of this video is to make you understand the nuances of the Terra Mirth case study uh, and it will help you prepare uh, for the exam as I mentioned. and. Uh, it will help you understand or visualize the solution around uh, the Terra Mirth case study. And um, you can obviously go through the of official documentation to understand uh, the case study better and in depth. But my purpose is to help you visualize the solution concepts uh, and the different products and services that have been identified to be used uh, as a solution for this case study and help you visualize the different moving parts of this uh, solutions architecture. So what is Terram Earth? In brief, uh, Terram Earth is a heavy equipment manufacturing company. Uh, it manufactures equipments for mining and agricultural industries and uh, they have uh, 500 plus dealers in their network and uh, service centers uh, in more than 100 countries. So uh, their mission is to build products that uh, uh, that will make their customers more productive uh, in their areas. So there are uh, more than 2 million Terramarth vehicles in operations currently and they have a growth of 20% yearly. So keeping these data in mind, we will have to create a solution architecture for them. And the vehicles uh, that are on the field collect telemetry data from the many sensors uh, that they have uh, fitted. Uh, and these send in the data real-time data from the operations and a small subset of the critical data is also transmitted from the vehicles um, in near real time and it helps to facilitate their fleet management. The rest and sensor data is collected, compressed and uploaded daily when the vehicles return to their home base and each vehicle generates about 200 to 500 megabits uh, bytes of data per day. So what are they looking at? Uh, the business requirement is to predict and detect vehicle malfunctions uh, for the dealerships to provide just-in-time repair wherever possible and uh, they want to decrease cloud operational cost uh, and uh, they want to obviously increase speed and availability of the development workflow and they want to allow remote developers to be more productive without compromising code or data security and they want to create a flexible and scalable platform for the developers to create custom APIs for dealers and partners so that is their requirement now how do we translate it into uh, architecture on Google Cloud so the pr products and services on Google Cloud that have been identified for solutioning is uh, Google Cloud IoT Core which is a fully managed service for ingestion of telemetry data from sensors to the vehicles. Obviously these would fit data, feed the data into uh, Cloud PubSub for streaming and real-time data ingestion and then cloud storage would be used for batch data processing from vehicles to upload data after returning to the home base and cloud big table would be used for storing time series data from the sensors. So 
uh, it is imperative that you understand these products or services well and know what they stand for or what solution they provide further uh, cloud data flow can be used uh, for real-time uh, batch uh, data aggregation pipelines bigquery can be used for uh, serverless data warehouse uh, it can be used to enable scalable data analysis and uh, google cloud http global load balancers uh, will be helpful to service global clients with improved service availability so uh, we will have to play around these services apart from uh, machine learning services uh, on Google Cloud AI platform which will be used for prediction of vehicle malfunction so uh, with the data that is collected from the sensors the dealerships would be able to know what types of problems uh, are going to happen with the vehicles in future and they can uh, get them for some preventive maintenance as well and for the solution to the um, uh, slow deployments that they have right now uh, we can enable ci cd cloud source repositories cloud build to uh, help with devops automation uh, we can use cloud iam to provide remote developers the access permissions to google cloud project resources so these are the toys which we can use to uh, play around and build this architecture these are the building blocks and further we can also improve their uh, api infrastructure by using apg hybrid uh, to host apis in gcp and on the on-premise environments that they have right now and uh, uh, we can uh, leverage uh, their applications into a microservice architecture and deploy them as containers uh, using Google Kubernetes engine and the sandbox environment uh, can be provided to developers uh, with uh, app engine or various other uh, GCP products and uh, we can make it more secure by using cloud KMS for managing and rotating the cryptographic keys and uh, we can use uh, the developer portal for uh, uh, partners and developers to search and test the Terraform Earth APIs and uh, we can use cloud operations for logging, tracing, profiler, uh, monitoring and debugger. So uh, these are the various uh, moving parts here and now let's look into this diagram uh, and understand better like how these moving parts work together and how the flows uh, are working here so if you look at the left hand side so here are the different vehicles which have the sensors in them and are directly connected devices so these IOT sensors send data to the IOT core and uh, and as I, as I mentioned some of the data are real time that go to the IOT core and uh, land into Google Cloud functions and uh, the rest of the data which are sent daily are sent to google cloud storage buckets and from there it moves to cloud data flow and through cloud data flow goes to cloud big table big query ai platform for predictions and to data lab and data studio for dashboards and insights so this is how this part works now the real-time data that goes into iot core goes through the pub sub and from the pub sub the different actions are taken if it is analytical uh, kind of uh, information it goes to data flow and from data flow to cloud big table and the analysis and dashboarding and if it is a uh, real-time data which needs some other processing it can be sent to a serverless functions like cloud cloud functions where uh, the processing is done and then it is update uh, it updates the iot core based on that so this is the iot side of things and 
um there is another side which is about the development and uh, uh, and the deployment of applications so you can see here the developers work on their own systems and they push code to the code repository and then you have ci cd pipelines uh, which uh, allow you to build the code and then uh, create uh, docker images and store them in container registries which can then be deployed into Kubernetes clusters. And these clusters uh, manage the stacks for analytics service. They provide a web UI. They can be used to build the backend, uh, uh, the, the, the backend APIs and can be uh, exposed uh, using the APG platform and HTTP load balancers for the users uh, who are the their partners and dealerships uh, to access that information using those APIs. And uh, there is another moving part where their manufacturing plant using cloud pubs up and cloud data flow uh, store uh, data in uh, uh, in their legacy uh, inventory uh, in their logic ma manager uh, logistics management system databases so this part is a hybrid kind of environment where on-premise and Google Cloud are uh, amalgamated together so this is all about the uh, Terramarth case study and how it looks like and the entire uh, infrastructure as you can see is running on Google Cloud Platform and um, the security part is handled by Cloud IAM policies. Uh, we have cloud monitoring components and we have cloud uh, KMS. So whatever questions you will get around this can be answered using these components but obviously you will have to go in depth into all of these components and understand how these work but the purpose of this diagram is to help you visualize how Terramarth uh, proposed solution would look like and what are the moving parts so that you can uh, answer your questions better. All right, so this is all about Terramarth case study. If you have any further questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. I will also include the link to the official documentation for the Terramarth case study. Go through it once um, and it will help you uh, know about this case study better. And you can answer your questions without having to read the case study again and again in the exam center so that you already uh, have uh, the case study and the solution in mind so you, the only thing you will be dealing there on the exam center is understanding the questions and then uh, obviously answering them so all the best for your preparations stay tuned and watch other videos in this channel thank you